Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top, beautiful Monday morning here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas. This would be Monday, March 25th, 2019 on this gorgeous day uh, to be alive on the planet. And so I have about one more day of dealing with the Amazon rainforest going bozo naro on my backyard so I can get my life back. But before I dive into that, I'm going to do what I do every day and dive into my <clears throat> We Are So Fucked Doomer headline of the day. But even before I go there, I have the pleasant task of thanking my old buddy Guy Lane, Guy Lane, for uh, his kind pledge to my Patreon page for supporting the work that I do here and on Collapse Chronicles. And Guy and I are trying to work out an interview. I've already interviewed Guy. If you haven't, Guy Lane, if you haven't heard my interview, go look that up. And we're trying to figure out how Guy Lane can interview me but we're having some Luddite technical issues from my end. But maybe someday that will happen. And my old buddy Mark Johns from West Bumblefuck, New Mexico. Uh, as I say, if, if, I, if I had to choose, you know, my, my eco-village for the end times, if I had to choose 12 people on the planet, to uh, live out the end times with Mark Johns uh, would be certainly one of the top 12 on the planet I would choose it. and I want to thank Mark for his continuing support of my efforts here on YouTube with his kind PayPal donation and anyone who wants to donate to my PayPal or my Patreon or my GoFundMe or just to send donations physically, uh, you can find out how to do that on the <clears throat> introduction to all my videos. And I do appreciate everyone who has ever found it in their hearts and wallets to support my work. And I think that that includes this fellow who I want to thank for sending me today's We Are So Fucked headline. I, ha I don't have the stomach to go on the mainstream media. I'm just depending on my tribes members. Just the amount of doom you guys send me. Uh, I don't even have to go on the mainstream media. I want to thank my old buddy Treebeard from Canada, from the great white Arctic, uh, for sending me this National Geographic article. And I'm thrilled to announce that I will be interviewing Treebeard <clears throat> for my next edition of Collapse Chronicles. Treebeard's been holding back. i always known this guy has been just holding back a little bit from me, but I think Treebeard is actually ready to come out and tell us how he really feels. So you can look for that on uh, Sunday. But right now, we're going to share this story that uh, <clears throat> Treebeard sent me from none other than Rupert Murdoch's National Geographic magazine. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into a National Geographic Ru uh, Rudolph Murdoch rant. So what's up with... This is actually, as, as a lot of... Uh, National Geographic is is a photo essay uh, by a photographer name. You gotta have to go on the link to see this. Charles Zalot, X E L O T, uh, took a trip up to uh, Russia's Arctic coast to bring us a photo essay of planet eating gone completely off the radar. See Russia's massive new gas plant 
on the Arctic coast. As climate change rapidly warms the Arctic, Putin's Russia places a big bet on the future of fossil fuels. So this is what uh, Donald Trump's little bromantic partner over in Russia is doing to pull out all the stops to pull out as many fossil fuels as he still can while there is still a planet. Take it away, National Geographic magazine. <clears throat> while most of the world is watching the rapidly melting Arctic with increasing alarm and placing the blame squarely on fossil fuels, Russia and its partners in France and China are seeing ruble signs, billions of them in fact, to be made selling Arctic fossil fuels to the rest of the world. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. <clears throat> Late last year, the Russian energy giant Novatech finished building the northernmost industrial facility on the globe, Yamal Liquid Natural Gas, Yamal LNG, a 27 billion dollar liquefied natural gas plant sitting at 71 degrees north at Sabeta on the bank of the Ob River. The, the facility and its new port cling to the eastern shore of the gas-rich Yamal Peninsula, which sticks up like a frost-bitten thumb into the Kara Sea, that is, in the middle of frozen nowhere, well, Tempa frozen nowhere. The plant was finished a year ahead of schedule, in no small part because the Russian government, you know, which like uh, any other government on the planet, uh, takes its marching orders from the fossil fuel companies that own the Russian government, just like they own this government, uh, because the Russian government helped build a massive port for LNG tankers, an airport, and a power plant, not to mention using its fleet of nuclear-powered icebreakers to keep the channel clear for ships coming in with construction material. If anybody thinks that there's any difference between the Russian government or any other government uh, and the fossil fuel industry, this is the military industrial complex uh, in living color brought to you by National Geographic magazine. And that is just the beginning. No shit, Sherlock. Some 15 ice-breaking LNG tankers are on order, along with a new rail line and two more uh, LNG facilities across the Alba River estuary. Probably should say the soon-to-be former Alba River estuary. The Russians expect all the plants, you know, to produce a combined 60 million tons of LNG each year by 2030. Mm. Sabeta, a community that was tiny even by frozen tundra standards only five years ago, is now a major building block in Russian President Vladimir Putin's grand pivot North, said Putin in 2017, who called Sabeta a, quote, universal port for all kinds of goods. This is a very convenient place with really good logistics. Yes, a very convenient place out in the middle 
of nowhere, hundreds, if not thousands of miles from the nearest uh, any sort of emergency response to uh, an oncoming environmental catastrophe. If you had to find a more inconvenient place on the planet to respond to a baked in the cake environmental catastrophe, it would be harder to find than Sabeta, Russia. Anyway, the prospect of relatively cheap gas along the shortcut between Asia and Europe drew a few investors anxious for a toehold in the Arctic, which the U.S. Geological Survey estimates may hold one-fifth of the remaining oil and gas preserves on Earth. Total, the French oil major owns a 20% stake of the Yamal gas plant, as does China's national gas company, CNPC, while the Chinese government's Silk Road Fund owns 10%. I'm going to have to uh, come back and do a, uh, a rant on China's Silk Road Fund. Let's offer one of these photographs just to give you some idea of what we're talking about uh, up there in the middle of nowhere. I mean, look at this goddamn thing. This thing makes, uh, makes all of that shit down there on the Texas coast look like a goddamn uh, Lego toy. Anyway, <clears throat> the plant is just now beginning to operate at full capacity, but last year it shipped 7.5 million tons of LNG to five continents. It also attracted French photographer Charles, I guess is X-E-L-O-T, we'll call him Zelo. Charles Zelo, a former environmental engineer who had become fascinated with the massive project. Um, and so this is, uh, you know, Zelo's photo rob you need to go on the on the link to see the rest of these unbelievable photos uh, this is a very important project for them says zelo hmm initially hired by novatech he was given free range to photograph the plant which during construction hummed with some 30,000 workers quote there are very few large industrial projects in Russia. Well, oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Quote, there are very few large industrial projects in Russia. This is the only one Russian television is talking about, saying this is the future. No shit, Sherlock. Close quote. Sabeta is now a small city with restaurants and gyms and even a small Russian Orthodox church that was blessed by the Patriarch of Moscow in 2016. Zelo has returned several times since then to photograph the new workers village as well as the traditional villages of nearby Ninets reindeer herders who have lived in Yamal for generations. Uh, he it was the only Westerner to travel aboard the, uh, the first ice-breaking LNG tanker named for the late CEO of Total, <clears throat> on its maiden voyage from Yamal to France when it broke through five foot thick ice en route. Said Zelo, you know, of his trip, 
It felt like riding a train. No rolling at all, just flat. Outside, you could hear the slosh of ice along the side. Yes, the giant ship, like many others, that Russia plans to operate along the northern sea route runs on LNG, which is a good thing, uh, says Frederick Haig, founder of the Norwegian environmental group Bellona, who has worked in the Russian Arctic uh, for decades, said Haig, quote, running a ship on LNG does not help the climate much. No shit, Sherlock. But in terms of accidental release, don't you love that term? But in terms of accidental release, there is a big difference between gas and heavy fuel oil. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, we're so fucked. Accidental release. Russia has already been transporting oil in ice class tankers for the past few years from a few small fields and offshore platforms in the Arctic to a pristine Norwegian ford near Honningsvang. There the cargo is transferred to larger non-ice class tankers for shipment further south and last November it started to do the same thing with LNG. And now the production at the new Yamo plant has helped increase the traffic on Russia's northern sea route, uh, which runs from the Kara Sea east to the Bering Strait by 25% last year to 18 million tons of cargo. Putin has ordered that the tonnage be quadrupled to 80 million tons, meaning 80 million tons mostly of oil we're talking about, in the next five years. There you go. But even Russia's Ministry of Natural Resources choked on that target, meeting it it reported would take an additional $163 billion of investment in Arctic resources. I, I see no problem with Putin raising $163 billion in, uh, for the rape and pillage of the Arctic uh, from the Chinese Silk Road Investment Fund. I'm sure I'll be quite happy to write a check for a puny little $163 billion to uh, destroy a planet. Uh, and this investment would include development of coal deposits on the Tayamir Peninsula east of Yamal. And don't forget development of the Payaka oil fields in the Venice River Delta and of a northbound oil pipeline from the Vancor oil fields. Uh, anyway, guys, this article goes on and on. I'm going to put the link and uh, you can read this yourself. Uh, Oh well, let me let me pick it back up here. I'm gonna take out the middle, um, wrapping up the inconvenient truth about all of this. There is another big problem that may burst Putin's dream of an industrialized Russian Arctic, the same one the Russians are exacerbating by pulling more fossil fuels out of the ground. This is some uh, climatologist with a name I'm not even going to begin to pronounce. Quote, I'm not sure how long the project will go on because of climate change. They built the LNG plant on pilings 
the calls of the permafrost, yet everything in the Arctic is melting. In gas fields in particular, there is some danger. <clears throat> there are a lot of holes in the permafrost there already, and you don't know when they will open up. No shit, Sherlock. <clears throat> Besides climate change itself, efforts to limit climate change also makes investing in Arctic gas risky. Uh, quoting this person whose name I cannot pronounce, the immediate question is, will we need gas for that long? If you have an investor, if you were an investor, would you put all this money into fossil fuels? The answer to your question is yes, that's exactly where I would put it. Anyway, um, and of course the world is already awash in cheap gas. I guess gas is cheapest it has ever been here in the state of Texas because of fracking. <clears throat> Zelo was struck by more philosophical questions as he photographed tiny workers welding together panels on the inside of giant gas storage tanks at Yamal as if they were stone cutters working on Notre Dame. Centuries ago, he says, quote, we were putting the same energy into building cathedrals. Now we are putting all our energy into these edifices to fossil fuels. Even the wellheads look like an orthodox cross, close quote, and he's got photographs of that. Whether future Russians will benefit from the present Arctic gamble or will see it as Putin's folly remains to be seen. In the meantime, the Arctic continues to warm at twice the rate of the rest of the world. No shit, Sherlock. And that brings us to the close of the We Are So Fucked uh, Doomer headline of the day. Thank you again, Treebeard, and we look forward to hearing from you in a few days. And now we're going to change shirts, head over to Collapse Chronicles, and go over to The Guardian uh, at this weird story, although not so weird, when you understand what they're talking about. U.S. and Saudi Arabia blocking regulation of geoengineering. And uh, so anyone you know, interested in how the geoengineering debate is going to be playing out uh, during the collapse of global industrial civilization needs to come over to Collapse Chronicles for more on that story. Get out there and enjoy your pre-geoengineered planet while you still can, because we are so fucked. Bye, guys.